Hi, I'm Kathy Johnson from Pyramid of Potential, and this is uh, Lesson 24 of 60 in the Harnessing Learning Potential video series. Today we're talking about the symmetrical tonic neck reflex. And even though I've lumped it together with the other reflexes from earlier, this actually is not a primitive reflex. It's called a postural reflex. The reason is because it emerges after birth. All the others emerge uh, while the mom is still pregnant, okay, uh, in utero, but this one doesn't usually emerge until six months. And that's pretty interesting because it means that the other, or at least some of the other reflexes need to integrate in order for this one to even emerge. So um, let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay, and by the way, this integrates at about 11 months, so just before a year. So um, there's two positions to the symmetrical tonic neck reflex, or STNR. And one of them is like this, so that the head is up, the arms are um, straight and forward, and the legs are bent. And the other position, position is exactly the opposite. So the head is down, the, le the arms are bent, and, and the legs are straight. So what can happen if a child retains a symmetrical tonic neck reflex? Well, we start off with poor posture. This particular reflex, uh, when it emerges, it is just before crawling. And in order for a baby to be up on their hands and knees and be able to hold their head, their whole body up requires a lot of muscles in their neck, backs, and shoulders. So in order for this to even emerge, we must have been working on that tonic labyrinthine reflex and that asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, building all those muscles. So if we see poor posture, chances are we didn't see, uh, we didn't get all those muscles developed. Next is an ape-like walk, and that's kind of like this, okay, walking around poor posture, not really swinging our arms or anything like that. Next is a W leg position. So instead of crisscross applesauce when, when sitting on the floor, they put their legs out like this into a W, and it's comfortable. I can't do that. They may have poor eye-hand coordination. So think about this particular reflex and how the head and the arms and the legs are dependent on each other. If the head is up, that means that the arms are straight and up, okay? The legs are bent. And if the head is down, the arms are bent and the legs are straight. So let's suppose somebody's trying to catch a ball. I've got the ball. I've got the ball. Here it comes. Okay, their head is up, their like, arms are straight. Okay, but as the ball comes, their arms slowly come down too, and the ball has already gone through. And you'll see this very frequently where the ball just goes through. Okay, poor eye-hand coordination, having a lot to do with um, both arms, head, and legs. Uh, we then see possibly a messy eater. Same thing, if somebody's trying to see their food, that means that their head is bent, and so their arms are bent. Their head is down, so their arms are bent. But in order to reach their food and straighten the arms, okay, head comes up, grab the food. Now, look down, this comes up, and hopefully they get it right to where they want. So there's, because of this relationship of the head and the hand position, very difficult to uh, be able to hit your mouth right where you want it each time. Next is tracking problems. And this is um, especially, uh, we're looking at, with a symmetrical tonic neck reflex, we're looking at a um, vertical tracking like this. Tracking means being able to follow a moving, moving object smoothly, okay? We need this in order to, when we're reading, um, smoothly as we read across a line to get to the very next line and read across and get to the next line without skipping lines or repeating lines. I actually had a very bad issue with this, meaning that every paragraph, because my eyes would jump 
lines or stay on the same line, I'd have to read every paragraph three times. So I was a, quite a slow reader. Still got through. Still got through and did fine. Um, next, uh, by the way, as we're speaking of convert, uh, tracking problems, horizontal tracking is uh, developed during asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. That was not mentioned in the previous video, so I'm making sure that you know it now. Uh, convergence problems, again, we've spoken about this, and how during the first year of life, uh, the child is diverging further and further and able to see further and further away. And so since this is just before crawling, the baby can see almost all the way across the room. We see near focusing problems again, so a lot of vision problems in this particular, uh, this particular reflex. Uh, we see slow with copying tasks because of those convergence issues. Difficulty learning to swim. This is another coordination issue. They're trying to keep their head above water and they're holding on to a kickboard. It's great because their arms, head is up, arms are straight. But what if they're trying to learn to doggy paddle or crawl, okay? It doesn't work with the head position. And finally, we see attention issues. And this particular attention issue is like the wandering mind, where the person just can't pay attention if it's not really, really interesting and grabbing their attention. And their mind will just kind of wander. So those are the symptoms to the symmetrical tonic neck reflex, STNR. And on the next slide, you will see some more suggestions as to how to integrate it. Thanks.